It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello, hello, and welcome to a brand new year here on the e-commerce master plan podcast. It's exciting to have you here, not least because we're hey, 2020 is over, 2021, here we come. But also because as we do every year, we are starting off our year with our e-commerce growth series this year sponsored by Clavio. So I'm Chloe Thomas, the creator and host of this now multi-award winning podcast. And it's my aim in every episode to help you find ways to improve your e-commerce business. And we're taking that to a whole other level in January because we're going to be giving you two episodes a week. So you need us in your diary for both Monday and Thursday because we're bringing you eight episodes in all this month. They are handpicked by me to bring you a different approach to growing your e-commerce business each time. And we're covering a wide variety of topics this year with some pretty amazing growth stats too, plenty to back up these ideas. So do make sure you listen to them all because I promise you're going to come away with great ideas from them all. We're kicking all of this off with a case study on how to increase your profits four times over simply by switching your mindset from a selling mindset to a service mindset. So get ready for that and a whole host of other very cool tips from my excellent guest to kick the year off with. You're going to find out all about that very, 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 very soon. But first, please do check out the sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Clavio, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform for brands of all kinds and sizes. Whether you're an entrepreneur just starting out or you're part of a marketing team at a multinational brand, Clavio will give you everything you need to create memorable marketing moments. Building customer relationships that keep shoppers coming back time and time again. Get started with a free account today. Visit clavio.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash master plan. Smart Freight can help you save time and money. Smart shipping parcels and pallets through Smart Freight's carrier management platform allows you to consolidate your outbound logistics onto one platform. With over 650 carriers worldwide, Smart Freight has you covered by ensuring you are always going via the cheapest, fastest or greenest eco-friendly option. Visit smartfreight.com to book a demo today. And now to introduce today's special guest. Travis Ziegler is the CEO at iLove, a US D2C retailer of eye health products who give a portion of profits to ending preventable blindness. Founded in 2015, they now in 2020 are on track for over $4 million in sales. Hello, Travis. Chloe, thanks for having me on. Oh, it's great to have you here. Um, you have such a fascinating business and we'll see how many bits of it we can get into as we go through the, the chat today. But before we get into what it's like now, how did you get started in the e-commerce? How did you end up in this world? So I'm not going to bore your listeners with the, the typical entrepreneur story, you know, that we as as little kids got into like lawn mowing businesses. But actually, that's when my e-commerce journey started. I actually started selling on eBay back in 95 when I was 11 years old. And um, I would sell anything that I had around the house that I didn't want anymore. And that was when you had to mail the paper check to the seller and then you had to wait for it to clear and then you had to mail it out. So I did that at 11 years old. I actually got my PayPal account suspended when I turned 18 because they realized I was using it illegally under the age of 18. But that's like my founder story, but that's not how I founded I Love. So my wife and I are both optometrists and we're both eye doctors. We were practicing from 2010 to 2015 for my uncle. And we felt the entrepreneur bug. I didn't know what it was to be an entrepreneur, really. But my uncle kept telling me, like, you're going to be great. You're going to do you're going to do really well in the entrepreneur space. That's how your mind works. I didn't know what that meant. And so we actually quit the job with my uncle. We moved from Columbus, Ohio to South Carolina. For your listeners, that's about a uh, about a 1500 mile move and away from our family. And then we started two optometry businesses. And at the same time as starting those practices, we um we're bored because we're only seeing about one patient an hour because we were brand new. And a course came up in my inbox. It's called Amazing Selling Machine. Um, I'm not affiliated with the course. It's just something that came in my inbox and I purchased it. And the rest is history. So we started our business in 2015 as a result of this course coming in my inbox. 
teaching us how to sell on Amazon. And we actually started out as a sunglass business. We still sell sun, some sunglasses, but now we've kind of pivoted into serving more of the dry eye community. And we're on a mission now to serve and heal 1 million dry eye sufferers naturally. And if your listeners are asking themselves, what is dry eye? That's good. That means you don't have it, but crusty <laughs> eyelids, you know, irritation in your eyelids. It's a real big problem. Um, just in the United States, 40 million sufferers. So about 10% of the population. And so if you take that 10% number, it's probably close to 1 billion worldwide, if not more. So that's what we're on a mission to heal. And that's what all our products that we come out with are now focused around that dry eye niche. Cool. You really went for it, didn't you? Moving 1500 miles, starting two practices, and then why not? Let's start selling on Amazon. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was just one of those situations that, you know, we wanted to have kids. We didn't have any kids at that time. And we're like, we can't run two practices with a kid. And if you want to stay home, like my wife wanted to stay home and do something. Little did we know three years later that we'd be full time in this and not practicing at all. So it was mostly a goal to make about ten to $12,000 a month. And we've far surpassed that now. And now we don't practice anymore. And we do this full time. How oh, cool. Okay. You mentioned about the product, but um, are you still in South Carolina? No, we actually moved back to Ohio and then we realized how much we hate winter. And now we're in Austin, <laughs> Texas, which is even further away from South than South Carolina was. <laughs> and um, are you selling just in the States or are you selling globally? So we've done global um, on our Shopify store. We, we ship anywhere in the world um, and Amazon, we only do the U.S., and we've done Amazon UK, we've done Amazon Europe, actually Germany, Italy, France, Spain. Um, we've done Canada, we've done Australia. And we actually closed all those down to just focus on Amazon US, which I'm sure we'll get into. And then with our Shopify store, we actually do worldwide. And that's, that's if somebody wants us worldwide, they have to go to Shopify and they have to pay for shipping, unfortunately, which can be a little pricey. And, and we certainly will get into that later. I'm very intrigued as to why you cut back to just Amazon.com. Um, and what are you, you mentioned you're selling on Shopify. So are there any kind of key widgets or plugins you'd um, like to let the audience know about? Because everyone seems to have those who's on a Shopify installation. Yeah, keep it simple. I mean, don't overwhelm yourself with all the, the applications and the widgets that are out there. Um, the, the most impactful one for me, I follow Ezra Firestone pretty a lot in the, the Shopify world. And he's got the same demographic as we do that 61 year old postmenopausal female. His is boom by Cindy Joseph. Ours is called I love and same demographic. So I pretty much do as Ezra says, and he's got a couple great apps that are called um, one click upsell, which is a pre and post purchase upsell app. You've everybody's probably heard of funnels. It allows you to create those funnels very easily on Shopify. And then he also has an app called Zipify pages. And Zipify pages allows you to make those landing pages to then put them in the shopping cart for Shopify and then allows you to get into that upsell and downsell sequence. And, you know, that adds close to probably $100,000 a year onto our website just by having those pre and post purchase upsells. But not only that, it allows you to kind of expand your product offering and get other products into your, your customer's hands because everybody has that hero product. Most of us in business have that one product that does, you know, 30 to 50 to sometimes 80% of the revenue. And if you get more people on that one product, they'll buy your other products. And so use that hero product to then introduce your customers to those other products. And that's what we use one click upsell for. Nice. And I, I love the the kind of the little the tip you glossed over there a little bit, which is you one of the reasons you follow Ezra so closely is because his e-commerce business is targeting the same customer type as you. And I think that's something which um which you know there are these days there are a lot of a lot of practicing e-commerce experts out there to follow and i think that's such a good idea is to find the one who sells to a very similar demographic as you because if you're following someone who's giving advice for selling to 20 year olds who are into fashion versus someone who's selling to 40 year olds who are into fine food totally different tactics i love that such a clever idea um taking us off topic though so uh then what does your team look like? There must be more than just yourself and your wife these days. Yeah, so I would run as like, I operate as more of the CEO. I'm more of the visionary, the planner, the strategy, um, I lead the meetings. My wife is more of the COO role. She deals with the day-to-day, -day, um, which I don't even know how I would even consider doing that because I'm terrible at day-to-day. -day. And then we have kind of an executive assistant. She helps both of us. Um, anything we need done, we just kind of throw it to her to, to spread out to the rest of the team 
to do. And then we have a marketing manager and she is kind of my executive assistant. And she is in charge of our Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, Amazon ads, um, and then graphics. So she's a a designer by trade. We actually trained her in marketing. And so she's really good with pictures and photos. So she does all our photos and pictures. And then finally, we have our customer service agent and she's our chief happiness officer. Um, She's part-time. She works about 20 hours a week. And that's kind of our core team. We also have one person that is an assistant to my executive assistant. <laughs> she's a <laughs> she's a Filipino VA. Um, mo- all of our team is in the U.S. and we've done the Filipino route. And you know, it didn't feel like we could scale it as much as we could if we had people that were in our time zones that were in the culture. Because you know, when you're we we talked about Ezra following Ezra because the same demographics. When you have a business that is so like dry eye that you're solving a pain point, getting somebody that doesn't really understand the problem, like somebody in the Philippines, a completely different culture, they have dry eye, but they don't know what's going on in the U S. And so that's why we decided to build our team around U S and more specifically around moms, moms that are staying home. So we actually, I'm the only male in our business. And I did that kind of purposely because I, it's a very female based disease. It, It happens in men as well, but I don't know. I I felt like we've built a great team, but to go back to your question, we have a core five with a Filipino as well. So that's six. And then the rest are just contractors. So we have a warehouse in Missouri. Um, They're a team of about three. They do all our Shopify. They also do our fulfillment by merchant because just a side tip for Amazon sellers, if you don't have an FBA, which is fulfillment by Amazon, which is where you ship it into Amazon. If you have that and you don't have an FBM listing, you are primed to get into a lot of trouble. No pun intended with the prime word, but um, FBA and FBM should be on all your listings. And the reason is it, to go to the COVID example, when Amazon went to four weeks shipping time for some products, it didn't affect us at all because we what we did is we took the fulfillment by merchant and put it into the buy box, which is like the for sale box on Amazon. And we were able to ship still in five days, not prime, but still able to ship in five days versus four weeks because of COVID. And so we did take an impact in sales, but... Um, but but much less of one if you hadn't had FBM set up. Exactly. So that's kind of our core team. And, you know, the rest is taken care of by... We have a logistics coordinator. Um, they order our inventory, inventory forecasts, and then they operate all the moving parts of boats and ships and planes and fleets <laughs> yeah. and whatever else that I have no idea how to do. So that's kind of our core team. It's a whole different language, that ops and logistics bit, isn't it? It's uh, it's well worth getting a specialist on board, especially when there's borders involved. And it's usually part-time. So it's not like a full-time business or a full-time position. Like ours is only part-time and, you know, that's, he does a lot for us. Very nice. Like liking the structure. And thank you for detailing, putting it out there in such detail. Now I'm going to come back to that question. We, we kind of teed up earlier about Amazon.com because you know, usually I always think of people going, right, I'm going to, going to do the selling on Amazon and then I'm going to expand to other countries because Amazon's really incentivizing people to do that. And then we let them all run. So what, what led to you going, actually, the only Amazon we care about is .com and we'll service the rest of the world via our Shopify site? Uh, trial and error <laughs> <laughs> is learn from my failure because you can do it. And if you have the bandwidth and the power to do it, then go for it. But whenever you launch into a new country, you're, you're building something brand new again. And we are so focused on the U.S. because this is where our core audience is. We have a lot of Canadians and we have a lot of people in the U.K. that follow us as well, just because the language, language barrier isn't there for that. Um, we have a, a YouTube channel called the, the Dry Eye Show, and we've got about 45,000 followers on that. We have a Facebook group that's got about 12,000 in the group all around dry eye. And most of them are US based. Canada is another one. And then the UK, like I said, in Australia, just because of the language. But to go back to your question, we spread over to Europe, found it to be an extreme distraction. And your healthcare system's different as well. So we're, we're targeting dry eye, and your healthcare system covers a lot of the medications and, and things that you need. So it's very hard to convince people over in Europe 
to buy a product that their, your insurance or your universal health care might cover. And so that was one of the difficulties we faced. And we even lowered the price to like break even over there. And we still just couldn't get it going because of that, that hurdle that we were trying to overcome. And so then we just brought it back here. And if you want to buy it from the UK, you just buy it on our website. Um, secondly, our sunglass company, we tried to take over there too. You guys don't have a sun. Like it's behind, <laughs> it's behind clouds all the time. So the sunglass season over there was only one month out of the year. And that was like June. And then our sales tanked the other 11 months. And so um, it was kind of a, a couple situations and it was a big distraction. And so when we refocused back on the US only and just kept focusing on our audience here and then relaunching products, we pretty much said we're going to continue to just relaunch products here until we start to see a plateau or a decline. And we haven't seen that now that we started refocusing back on the US. And once we started doing that, um, I, I told you before we got on the show here in 2018, we did 3.6 million. 2019, we did 3.2 million. And that was a result of trying to spread out, focusing on Amazon or Shopify instead of Amazon. We were trying to do too many things. So in 2019, we we're going to do over 4 million. We refocus back to Amazon US only. That's the only thing we focus on. We have Shopify, yes, but it has no focus. We only spend $3,000 on retargeting ads per month. And that's it for Shopify. And our Shopify does about 60 to 70,000 a month. But that's as a result of building our audience and focusing on audience growth. And then as we build that audience, we send them all to Amazon US because it floods Amazon US with external traffic, which Amazon loves more than almost internal traffic. And so it's kind of this culmination of just, if you can focus on one channel so much, it's just going to take off and you're going to be happier because you're not spread out having to do a million things. I work 10 hours a week in I love and that's because we focus so much. My wife works 20 hours a week. Our assistant works 30 hours a week. All everybody in the, the, the company works less than 40 hours per week. And we do that because we want them to be present for their families. We want them to live a happy life and still want to come to work and be, have that freedom that's associated with it. So we came back to Amazon us to focus and to be happier and to just really expand the business that way because we've grown as a result of focusing. I think focusing is such an undervalued tactic these days or, or you know, or way of being quite frankly, because you get a lot of business going, oh, well, we have to be everywhere. We have to be everywhere. And I have to become a master of every single platform. And the thing is, it's how you grow a Shopify store is a completely different set of skills and, and fo daily focus to how you grow an Amazon store, to how you grow a YouTube channel and a podcast and a blog and a Facebook group. And it's like how many, there's only so many of these, you know, a team or a person has the bandwidth to actually master and actually do a good job at. So you, you, I totally get why focusing in would, would make the difference for you. And just to, just to really nail down what the, the structure is. So you have kind of the content centers. So the YouTube, the Facebook group, the content and support, I suppose, the YouTube, the Facebook, the podcast, where you attract people in. Then from there, you drive them to Amazon, because as we said, Amazon loves the external traffic. And then the Shopify site kind of mops up the rest. So I'm going to throw a little hiccup in there. Oh, please do. Um, so the, the, the things that we focus on are number one, audience building. Audience building is our number one thing. So we're three years ago, is when we really started focusing on this actually yes yeah, three years ago from now so it was um august of 2017 this was actually right when we came out with our no i'm sorry yeah it was august 2017 right when we came out with our um first dry eye product we started focusing on blogging so audience building is number one so we want to get people on our youtube subscriber list we want to get people in our facebook group and we want to get people on our email list we also have some other things, but I'm just going to focus on those three for this, this show. And everything focused around email first, then getting them in the other two second. And so what we came up with was let's let's blog and create videos around the, the problem that our product solves, which is dry eye, another condition called blepharitis, which is crusty eyelids and inflammation of the eyelids, and another one called meibomian gland dysfunction. And so that's just where your eyelids have glands and they're just not functioning properly. So if we focus around the problem and just write about the problem, then naturally people are going to gravitate to finding that solution. And then our product is the solution. And so we come out with one blog post a week 
with a video usually. You know, video is optional. Um, and what we do on that blog post is we talk about the problem that our person is searching for. And so as we talk about it, it warms them up with this article. And then our solution is our product. It's not a direct sell. It's more of like, you need a hypochlorous acid eyelid cleanser. Oh, by the way, here's hydrate lid and lash cleanser. And on the blog itself, this is where it's very different from everybody else. On the blog itself, we actually have them click over to Amazon to buy. And everybody's like, wait, you have them on your Shopify site. Why aren't you trying to get them to buy on it on Shopify? And the reason is, is because Amazon converts, that listing converts at 40%. Shopify converts at about three. And so I want the, I want the purchase and the purchase, once they get it in their hands, they buy everything else. So then when we get them on the blog, we we try to get their email address. We then try to, we get them on the, our Facebook pixel audience list, and then we just retarget them. And so I mentioned earlier that we only spend about $3,000 on retargeting for our Facebook or on Facebook for our website. The retargeting involves getting them on the email list getting them back to the blog to look at more products. And then also if they've looked at a product, getting them back to that product to buy. And so that's all we do for, for Shopify, but we come out with one blog post a week. It's about a problem that our product solves. And then they click over to Amazon to buy again, driving that external traffic. Now the little hiccup in there is also that we drive Google ads to that blog post. So usually everybody that's doing Google ads is going after the product everybody's going after the product and so to go back to another one of my my products we sell eyelid wipes everybody's bidding on eyelid wipes on google ads nobody's bidding on blepharitis which is what eyelid wipes solve so i am sending traffic targeting blepharitis to an article about blepharitis and then three of my products are at the bottom because that's what helps them solve their problem now if you're bidding on eyelid wipes, you're paying $3 cost per click. If you're bidding on blepharitis, it's a, a penny a click. Of course, and the, the beauty of that, of course, is that if you were bidding on blepharitis, I'm probably going to say it wrong, but we'll roll with it, <laughs> blepharitis okay. and sending it to a product page that's all about eyelid wipes, your quality score on Google would be through the floor. It'd be awful because you haven't mentioned that word and you're never going to call a product blepharitis because it's not the name of the product. It's the problem that it solves. Whereas a blog post makes complete sense to be explaining how to solve this problem and, and going into the problem. So it's such a good matchup, such a clever way to do it. And so we, we do one of these a week and you know, out of 10 articles, one hits and one hits really well. So there's this one article that we have, it gets a thousand hits a day for a hundred dollars and it makes us a ton of revenue on Amazon. So we're spending about $500 per week and it drives, I think close to $1,500 per week on Amazon. And that doesn't count getting them on an email list. That doesn't count getting them on my pixel retargeting list. That doesn't count any of that. It's pretty much a self-liquidating offer, if not a profitable offer. It's not even self-liquidating. It's profitable because they're buying our product. Number one, but then we're also getting them as a lead and everything else for our Shopify store, but they're buying over on Amazon. So like this one article, again, one cent a click to get people on there. So it's a volume play. We're just trying to get as many people on there as possible. And you know, if 10 of those people click over to Amazon to buy, that's a huge victory. And so some of those articles hit, we have probably 10 of those articles that have hit like that, where we're spending $500 making $1,500. And then the rest of them, you know, just probably do like, 20 to $50 a week to make $300 a week. But as you start building those up and now we've been doing it for three years. So we've got, you know, 150 articles. Now it builds up and it snowballs. And so that kind of brings me to a point about persistence. We talked about focus earlier. Persistence is key. People think this is going to be a get rich scheme that you're going to get rich overnight. And it's just all about finding a path and taking it. And ours was content and focusing on building the audience and now we can release our audience list now is close to 70,000 email subscribers. And then we have 45,000 on YouTube, 12,000 in a Facebook group. So we can come out with a product. We just launched a product two weeks ago and we sold 700 in two days. And that was all on Amazon. So it was huge boost in our rankings. And unfortunately we had to recall the product because of mold issues, but that's not the point. So <laughs> that, that hurt as well, but we can launch a product because we've built that trust and we've built this 
this community of raving, rabid fans that will buy anything from us because we've served them instead of just trying to sell them a widget. We've served them by solving their problem, talking about their problem, feeling empathy for them because we do, because we're doctors. I mean, this is what we used to do. And then serving them with the products. And so we're not just trying to sell them. We're trying to build an educational platform. So all of our emails we send out aren't like, buy this, buy that, buy this. It's all about check out this blog post, check out this video we just made, check out this blog post. And it's all around the problem that our product solves and then our products there. Another thing I like about, you know, the fact you've you found the right route for your business and then you've been persistent at it, at it and you get that gradual increase and increase and cre- increase week on week on week as all these assets build up. But the other thing I, I like about it is as you do it that often, you get the process in place. So even content marketing can become a highly processed, technical, repeatable process because you know that you're going to use Google Ads to drive them to it. Then you're going to use X, Y, and Z to get them back. And that's how it all kind of fits together. It becomes a very repeatable model. Can I make a comment on that? Yeah, please do. So most people think, most entrepreneurs especially, they get into this business for freedom And they think freedom is being able to do anything, anywhere they want at any time. But freedom comes from structure. Freedom comes from structuring your life to be around what you want to do. And once you you get that, it's freeing. So I always recommend there's a talk by Craig Ballantyne and he teaches you how to make your schedule. And so all of us entrepreneurs say, oh, we do this to spend more time with our family and kids, and then we never spend time with our family and kids. And so it's it's just hilarious. And so what Craig Ballantyne teaches you to do is focus on yourself first when you're scheduling. And so I have a health club that I'm a part of, and so I get acupuncture and um, massage there. And so that was number one on my schedule. I have meditation every morning. That was number two on my schedule. And so taking care of myself first, my gym workouts are on my schedule. That's what I schedule first. And then number two, I schedule second time with my wife. So Friday morning, non-negotiable, Friday morning into the afternoon is date day with my wife. Not date night, date day. My son's at school. We can go there. At three o'clock every day, I have snack time with my son. So three to 4 p.m., snack time with my son. He gets home from school. And then I can go back to work for an hour. And then we have dinner and then the rest of the night to play with him. So I've scheduled that into my schedule first and then I go backwards and, and do work from there. So I told you earlier that for I Love, I only work about 10 hours a week. And then for our other business that we may talk about later, I work probably about 15 hours a week. So I work about 25 hours a week and that's it. Because we do this for a reason, for that freedom, but I've structured it. So I get to take care of myself first, my wife second, my son third, and then we get to focus on work after that. And there are, of course, you know, exceptions to the rule things happen in business. You have to put out fires, but we try to stick to that as as close as possible. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Success in 2021 means building stronger relationships with your customers. Last year saw a lot of consumers switching to buy online, leading to surges in new customer acquisition. So how are you planning on turning your new first-time buyers into profitable repeat customers? Well, that's what Clavio is for. Clavio helps businesses create memorable marketing moments through email, SMS and personalised website experiences. And that is what creates repeat purchases. That's why Clavio, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform, platform is used by over 50,000 e-commerce brands around the world. Get started with your free account today. Visit clavio.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. Customer experience when shopping online is crucial and it doesn't stop at the checkout. Smart Freight plugged into your e-commerce platform allows your customers to take the driving seat when it comes to selecting a shipping service. And branded tracking communications keep your customers informed of their order's journey all the way through to receiving their parcel. Visit smartfreight.com to book a demo today. It's time for the Top Tips Round. Right, Travis, you've already given us so many cool ideas and so many cool ways both to have a better life and to have a better business. So now we're going to go and do our top tips section. So are you you ready for these? 
<laughs> I think so. <laughs> I, th I think you're pretty warmed up. <laughs> okay. Uh, the first one is the book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? I have to just pick one. <laughs> I'll, you can have two if you can. Okay, I'll do two. two. All right. So, um, Ready, Fire, Aim by Michael Masterson. You're not going to be able to read that on Friday. It's going to take you a little bit longer than that. But the nice thing about Ready, Fire, Aim is it's a three part book. It's zero to 1 million, one to, I think, 10 million, and then 10 to 100 million. And so, whatever part you are in your business, just focus on that section, ignore the rest. And so, zero to 1 million is all about learning how to sell, one to 10 million is all about repeating the process over and over and over again. So making that system around the process and making the systems to grow to 10, that's where we are right now. And so we're just releasing more products, trying to get them to the same sales level as our hero product. And then the 10 to 100 million, I've never read, but I read that book or listen to it on audiobook and every January just to refresh my brain. And a, a side note, a, a hacking tip, buy the audible book, buy the physical book, Play the Audible at 3x speed while you're going through the physical book and you'll retain it and you'll read it incredibly fast. So that's kind of the overall business strategy book. But if you're in business, Profit First by Michael Michalowicz, not to be confused with the other one, Michael Masterson, but Michael Michalowicz, Profit First is by far the most impactful book that I've had on my business in a long time. We implemented it about a year and a half ago. It's, a, it's an accounting system that's actually fun. And it teaches you how to pay your profit first. And so after you pay your profit first, you then pay yourself second, you pay your taxes third, and then operating expense comes at the end. And so it's, it's reversed. So most of us think revenue comes in, then we have operating expenses, then we have profit on the bottom. But this flips it on its head. So you plan the profit first, you plan your payment second, you plan paying taxes third, and then everything else, you got to fit everything else into that operating expense. And whether profits 1% or 10%, it doesn't matter because you just need to start somewhere. So a lot of new entrepreneurs are like, I can't pay myself. I need to put it all back into my business. Pay yourself 1%. That's all you need to start. And then, so we're up to 10% profit and we pay ourselves 5%. And this isn't top line revenue. This is money that hits the bank. And so it's a lot different than top line revenue. So Profit First by Michael Michalowicz is huge. And you have to get the Audible because he's so fun to listen to. And I, I just love his book. And um, those two books have probably made the biggest impact on my growth and kind of managing the finances as we grow because managing a $4 million business is no different than managing a $400,000 business, which is no different than a $40,000 business. And you can, you can scale without having like a CFO or anything if you just follow that system. I'm so glad you mentioned profit first because... Um... I, I read and adopted that a couple of years ago and oh, it makes life so much easier and more fun as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what I would also say is there is an e-commerce version of Profit First written by um, Cindy Thomason, which um, if you, that is equally as good because it's all the same theories with some e-commerce tweaks in there too. Michael Michalowicz is much better to listen to because I've got both <laughs> audibles. So <laughs> I haven't listened to either of the audibles, so I will take your word for that, Travis. Um, okay, the next question is, um, she says, having got... I know, guys, you're listening and you're going, how do you not know what the next question is, Chloe? I'm used to having my script, guys. And the script wasn't on the right screen. Okay, uh, so... The, um, the next question is, of course, everyone's shouting at their podcast player right now, is the traffic top tip. Which marketing method do we the prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? So I have to go back to what I talked about earlier and nobody is doing this. Find the problem that your product solves and I guarantee you that you can get clicks for pennies on the dollar. So like if you're going after your product, you're going to be paying 2 to $3 per click to get that, if not more depending on what market you're in. But if you figure out the problem that your product solves and go after that on Google ads, you're going to pay anywhere from 25 cents per click or lower. And so it's a volume play and you're going to get a lot more traffic for a lot less, but you're going to get more people seeing your product, which is going to increase your brand awareness and it's going to increase your sales as a result and increase just your, your brand clout as well. I love it. More great advice. Okay. The tool top tip, maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plugin, a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? 
Yeah. So, you know, we all have a lot of tools, but we've simplified our tools over the past couple, the past year, actually. And one that we're really loving is a project management um, tool, which is Trello. You guys have probably heard of Trello. Trello has been game changing as far as organizing project management for us. And once we adopted Trello, it changed everything for us because when we launch a product, we used to have to like brainstorm this session. It used to be in a Google Doc, but where's the Google Doc? Now we just have a Trello board. It gets copied for that new product and it has every step in a card. And then it just moves along and everybody's responsible for their card and they know when it's their turn and they all have due dates on them. So Trello has really been a game changer for us. And also like our content strategy, our content strategy, you know, for one of my businesses is only like five steps. It's very simple. I've purposely made that business simple. Um, but for the dry eye show and for my, I love business, it's about 35 steps. And so there's podcasts, there's YouTube channel, there's Facebook, there's, uh, you know, the content on the blog, there's uh, what products to link to, there's the writing, there's everything regarding that. And if we did not have a Trello board for that, it would be a mess. We used to do it on a spreadsheet and it was terrible. Nothing was getting done on time. Nothing was getting done, period. So now it's on a Trello board and it just kind of just moves through the, the content. It's, it's great. Excellent. More, more excellent advice. Okay. The, finally, the growth top tip. If you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1,000, what would be your number one tip for them? You have to build your audience. You have to know the person you serve and just focus on serving that person because the more you focus on serving versus selling, the more you're going to grow and the faster you're going to grow. We focused on selling last year and we, we stumbled. We went from 3.6 to 3.2 million. This year, we refocus back on serving and we're going to do over 4 million. So huge increase in not only our revenue, the revenue is a sexy number, but we're going to almost 4X our profit as a result of going back to service versus selling. And so that's the real fun number is 4 million is sexy on a podcast. It's sexy on, on paper, but the profit number, the 4, 4X earnings and profit plus we've been able to pay ourselves more has been the real, I mean, that's the real value. And so building that audience will make your business unstoppable. When we went from, you know, 3,000 email lists to now 70,000, it has it's made us feel like we can do anything really. And, you know, we serve them. That's all we focus on is service to them. And then they'll buy our products as a result of that. I, I love it. Such clarity, Travis. You bring such clarity to things. I can tell you're someone who who has their scheduling down and therefore is not like, oh my God, there's so much to do all the time. Because <laughs> Creating that, that space to think and to spend time doing other things really can give you give you so much clarity. So um, I'm, I am personally so pleased you shared that with us earlier. All right, Travis, before we say goodbye, could you let listeners know where they can find you and your business on the web and social media, please? Yeah, so if you want to check out the I Love site, um, it's ilovethesun.com. That's not the letter I. Thank you, Apple, for doing that to me. It's an eyeball, so E Y E. L-O-V-E, lovethesun.com. As you can tell, we used to be a sunglass company. Um, we haven't changed the URL since we shifted into more of the dry eye space. So a lot of people were wondering, like, it doesn't make any sense. But the website had so much, like, domain authority that we just couldn't change it. So I love the sun.com. Um, you can also find any of our, our YouTube channels, The Dry Eye Show, and then the Dry Eye Syndrome Support Community on Facebook. That's if you're a dry eye sufferer and you just want to learn more about dry eye or if you want to just see how we do things. So you can see when we do our videos, how we do our videos, um, and then also just get on our email list so you can see that. My wife's an excellent copywriter, so her emails are incredible. And you'll really learn a lot from her emails that she sends out Mondays and Thursdays. Just she does that herself and just the way she writes is incredible and it's responsible for a lot of our growth and value add to our audience. So that's the best way to, to find that. Okay. And then a couple of times we've, we've touched on, we've mentioned the fact you're running a second business and it's one that could help quite a few of the listeners. So um, do you want to tell us a little bit about, about your other um, interests at the moment, please, Travis? Yeah, would love to. And thanks for letting me do this. Um, we, we are an Amazon PPC agency. We're called the Profitable Pineapple Ads Agency. And you can go to ProfitablePineapple.com. And you can see we actually have a free Amazon PPC course. That's for, for beginners, for people that are just getting started on Amazon and people that are doing around 25000 a month or less. And then we also have a paid course that's automation that has more coaching involved. And then we also manage it for people as well. And so we start management when you're doing about 50000 a month or more. And so that's at ProfitablePineapple.com. 
we also have a, a YouTube channel and a Facebook group around that as well. And that's Amazon PPC pros. So that's what we focus on is Amazon PPC. And we literally do exactly what we do in iLove for our clients. And so we experiment in my company first. If the experimentation works, we roll it out to the entire client load. And then um, right now we're experimenting with what's called Amazon DSP, demand side platform, and driving Google ads directly to Amazon. If that works successfully in iLove, we'll actually roll it out to our agency as well. So it's fun because it's not just an agency where we're focused on a bunch of clients and trying to get as many people on. We actually are a very small boutique agency and we focus on a fit more than actually trying to get as many people on as possible because you have to fit into kind of the philosophy that we're trying to do, which is scaling your Amazon PPC and helping you build your brand. And so profitablepineapple.com is where you can check more about that. Excellent. I'm sure we've got several people who are going, oh, I need some of that. <laughs> I'm heading over there straight away. Don't be afraid to reach out to me. So if, if you find there, um, you'll find links to my personal Facebook page. Don't be afraid to message me. It's Dr. Travis Ziegler. I think facebook.com forward slash DR Travis Ziegler. Um, but just find me on there. Shoot me a message. Don't be afraid to. And then um, my all my contact information is on the website. So not hard to reach out and find me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Travis. You've shared so many tips from in quite some quite diverse spaces, but all all cohesively coming together, I feel. Um, and you know, so much so much great resources as well for people to be able to go and go and grab from um, profitable pineapple as well. So um <laughs> so thank you, Travis, for coming on. It's been a been a pleasure finding out more about your business. Yeah, Chloe, thanks for having me on. So how great was that um, that session there with with Travis? So many great ideas. I mean, that whole model of if your problem, if your problem, if your product solves a solution, then heading down that content strategy and then bolting onto that content strategy, your uh, the Google ads to drive the traffic in, followed by then the um, the the retargeting on Facebook, such a good good way of getting cheap traffic and a very repeatable process to build up that content week on week. Also, as those of you who've listened for a while will know, I'm a big fan of of um, of diary blocking and scheduling. So I think that was a, a great bit of advice there from um, from Travis too. Now you can get the hands, your hands even, on the notes from today's show, including all those top tips, links to everything he mentioned, all those different ways of getting in contact with him, and all the rest of it at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast. There you can also get yourself registered for our very special 2021 planning webinar. Yes, this month we're going to be giving you a lot of ideas via the podcast that you could use to grow your business. But success always comes from working out which of your ideas you should do. And that's what this 2021 planning webinar is all about. In it, I'm going to be joined by some very special guests and we're going to be telling you more about it as the month goes by. But right now, I can tell you two 100% true things about it. The first is that it is happening the first week of February. So you can get your Christmas, you can get your January sales completely out of your hair before we sit down and work out exactly what it is you really should be doing in 2021. And the second thing I can tell you right now is that you can sign up for free right now by going to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash webinar. Okay, so whilst this month on e-commerce master plan, we are bringing you our e-commerce growth series sponsored by Clavio. Over on our little sister podcast, Keep Optimizing, it's all about getting your e-commerce marketing foundations right, including your team, your tech, your analytics, and more. There's going to be a new Keep Optimizing episode every Wednesday, as there always is every week. And if you liked what Travis was talking about with diary management, then you're really going to like next week's Teams episode. You can't quite get it now if you're listening to this as soon as it goes live, but it's coming up very soon and I know you're going to find it really useful. So make sure you've subscribed to Keep Optimizing on your podcast app of choice. Just search for Keep Optimizing. Or alternatively, you can head to keepoptimizing.com to find out more. And because I'm British, we spell optimizing with an S, not a Z. So sorry about that, Americans, but S, not Z. That's what we're doing at Keep Optimizing. Right. Enough talking about other things. What's happening right here on the e-commerce master plan podcast to help you? Well, 
This has been the first episode in our 2021 e-commerce growth series sponsored by Clavio. On Thursday, yes, Thursday, we're going to be bringing you this second episode where I'm going to be joined by a huge pile, a heap, if you will, of e-commerce experts sharing what they've taken as their number one lesson from all the stuff that happened in 2020. I know you all love these expert episodes when we put them together for you. So do make sure you tune in for that one. Lots of tips, ideas, routes to success in 2021, despite the fact we're going to be talking about 2020. That's live on Thursday. Now, I bring you a new interview every week because I want to inspire and help as many e-commerce business owners as possible to succeed and thrive with their businesses. So please, please, please do tell the other e-commerce business owners you know about what we're up to this month because I'd really love to help them too. And the content we put together is going to be groundbreaking. It really is stuff that's going to help you plot that route to success for your business in 2021. So please do spread the word. Well, look, I hope you have a great week. I hope we inspire you. And don't forget to keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the e commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at e commerce masterplan.com slash podcast.